Okay, today we're going to talk about then other methods of proving triangles congruent. Okay, so far, how many methods have we learned so far? Show me with your finger. How many methods have we learned so far of proving two triangles that are congruent? Two triangles are congruent. Very good. We have learned. I want 100% participation. So some of you do not have. Show me with your finger. How many ways have we learned so far? Brandon? Show me with your fingers how many methods we've learned so far. Two? How do we show that two triangles are congruent? Right, how many ways have we learned? Uh, there were three methods, basically. What were they, Jason? Uh-huh. Right, Brandon? Can you say it again? What were the three methods? Uh-huh. There you go. And actually, the fourth method, you may not have thought of it, but we don't normally use that method. But can somebody think of the fourth method? Actually, we could actually use this method, but no one really use, would do that. Yeah, what do you think? Oh, uh, that's actually, we're going to learn that today. That's the other method of proving. But we haven't learned it. We actually have learned this method. Michelle? Yeah, proving all six parts are congruent by using the definition of congruent triangles. But would you do that? No, because you know the th other methods, right? You know the, the other, right? It cuts down the work in half, right? Those three other methods. So why would you use the definition, right? But you could do it if you wanted to. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, so as you said before, we are going to actually learn this new, uh, this is a theorem, <coughs> angle, angle, side. You're right. So anybody want to guess what this might say, angle, angle, side theorem? What do you think it's going to say? Just by looking at the name, I bet you could guess what this theorem is saying. Yes, Hannah? Right, so how would this be different than angle side angle? I don't know what you said, but how would this be different than angle side angle? Right, the side does not have to be the included side. In other words, write this down. Two angles and a non-included side. You see the how? You see how this is different than uh, angle side angle? Two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of another triangle. Then, the triangles are congruent. Here's the picture. And thankfully, it's got a name, right? <laughs> so this is not a postulate like all the other ones. This is a theorem, isn't it? So we could actually prove this. So go ahead and write it down. And as you write this down, think about how you go about proving ABC is congruent to DEF. Okay, if <coughs> what you're given is you got two triangles, B is congruent to E, C is congruent to F, AC is congruent to DF. Okay. Who thinks they see what we need to do? What is then going to be the key step <coughs> to prove this theorem? Anybody see it? Because if I, if I have this, I'm done, really, to prove that the two triangles are congruent. <coughs> Anybody see what part? Which corresponding parts needs to be congruent? Anybody? One, two, three. I'll give you time. Go ahead. Discuss with your group. All right, think about it, guys. You got your new group now. Go ahead. What do you guys think? If, if I could show this one, if I could show this one thing, I'm done because that will make the two triangles congruent. Right now, we can't really use it. Okay, right now, we can't really do anything. Now, how many people think they see it? Okay, a couple more people than before, that's good. Let me ask you this, by the way. Could I use side, I mean angle, side, angle right now as it is? Why not? We have two angles congruent and a side congruent. Can I not use angle, side, angle? No, that'd be wrong because even though I have two angles and a side, is this side what? This side is not? It's not the included side, is it? Right? Leah, so then what do you think we need? If I could show this, I'm done. Um, two included sides are congruent. Two? If I could show that, yes, the side BC congruent to E and F, I'll be done. But I can't really do that right now. <coughs> So what's then the other another uh, way of doing it then? Exactly. It'd be a lot easier for us to show that angle A is congruent to angle D. Because if I could show that angle A is, is congruent to angle D, I'm done. Why? Because I could use class what? Angle side angle, right? Now the AC becomes D, AC and DE becomes the included side. Does that make sense? Is there a way to show that A is congruent to D? Yes, there is. Think back to what we did last time. We did a similar one 
where when we were proving some of the other theorem from last time you guys remember we have two triangles look two angles are congruent what can you tell me about the third angle you guys remember this from last time who remembers this because there's a way to show that a is congruent to d right away one two three people see four five go back to your notes remember we talked about this six seven Okay, a lot more of you. Who have not? How about Jonathan? What do you think, sir? No, that's the that's the uh, converse of the isosceles theorem. No, that's not what we, that's not the one we need here. I want to show that A is congruent to D. Brandon. Almost. You said it almost. Okay. He said it almost correctly. Say it again. When two angles of one triangle is congruent to what? Two angles of another triangle, then what? The third angles are congruent. Did you guys remember that one? Is that what you're going to tell me? Out of you had the hand up. Okay. So then we're, we know that A and D are congruent. And of course, we could use, since A and D are congruent, right? We know we have an angle, side angle. By angle, side angle, two triangles are congruent. Any question? Does that make sense? All right, uh, so that's how you go about proving this theorem, okay? Easy enough? By the way, why would A and D be congruent? It really comes from the fact that, well, it's a, it was the theorem, wasn't it? The theorem that says what? Sum of all the angles of a triangle is? 180. 180. So if, if this 180, A is 180 minus B minus C, isn't D 180 minus E minus F? So A and D must be congruent, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so then let's move on to the next thing I want to talk about. Can somebody read this for us? Do you see the overlapping triangle part? How about... I'm sorry. Uh, how about... Anybody want to read this for us? Kenneth, go ahead. Do you see overlapping triangles in the graph? Sometimes you want to prove that certain overlapping triangles are congruent. For example, suppose you have the following problem. Okay. So you have, do you see the two overlapping triangles? G, H, J, and what? G, I, K. You see that? Okay. So how would you go about proving that the two triangles are congruent? Anybody see this? Reagan, what do you think, sir? Um, yeah, how, so that it's given that G, A, I mean, G, J is congruent to GK and H and I are congruent. Is there a way to show that triangle GHJ is congruent to triangle GIK? Well, let me give you a hint. You want a hint? Reagan, whenever you have these sort of triangles, all you could do is, what you could do is, uh, you could separate these two triangles. Let me show you how they could be separated, okay? Here. Do you see how the triangles are now separated? All right, so for example, here, now, is that better? So I just separated these two triangles. So whenever you have two triangles that are you know, overlapping, you can separate them. Now, Reagan, do you see how you could prove the two triangles are congruent? First of all, do you agree that this is, say it again? Yeah, isn't this really because of AAS, so two triangles are congruent? You see how, e how easy it gets once you separate them? When you had them like this, sort of overlapping, it's sort of hard to see. Oh, sorry. It's sort of hard to see, right? But once you uh, separate them, you see how, it's, see how easy it is to see that this is nothing more than angle-angle side, right? By angle-angle side, the two triangles are congruent then, right? Do you see how easy, easy that is? So on your homework, do you think this might be helpful? Okay, on your homework, do you think you can get some overlapping triangles for this section? Yeah, whenever you get, the, get those, just over, uh, separate them. Yes, sir, question. Uh, No, very good question. So since the homework for tonight is 4.42, you can't use this AAS or, you know, sorry, angle angle side. But once you get to this section, yes, you may. All right, may I move on? Yes? Hello? OK, good. How many of you people know that in a right triangle, the longest side of there is the hypotenuse? Right? I did not know. You didn't know that? OK, well, now I'm telling you. So can you read this for us, Jack? Our final method Right 
hypotenuse, yes. The other two sides are called right. Okay. I kind of said it wrong. Well, not wrong, but I told you that hypotenuse is the longest side of this right triangle. We'll learn that later. That's, I think it's either a theorem or something. But the, the way they describe it is hypotenuse is the side opposite of the right angle. Right angle. Okay, that's the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So this theorem, by the way, is only going to work for, look at this theorem. The name is called HL theorem. Guess what the H stands for? Yes. Hypotenuse. Guess what the L stands for? Leg. Can somebody guess what this theorem might say then? Yes. Yeah. Exactly right. So, if the hypotenuse and a leg of one right triangle are congruent to the corresponding parts of the other right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. By the way, does this work for every triangle? Does every triangle have hypotenuse? No. So it only works for what kind of triangle, guys? Right triangle. So please keep that in mind. Okay, this will not work for every triangle because you have to have a hypotenuse, okay? In order to have a hypotenuse, you have to have right triangle. So here's a picture. The triangle ABC, you have two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle DEF. Look at, look at the hypotenuse. AB is congruent to what? Angle, uh, hypotenuse DE, correct? Right? And they told us that BC is congruent to triangle, I mean, BC is con the side, the BC is congruent to the leg EF. Then, if you have that to be true, then the two triangles must be congruent. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so how would you go about proving this? No, no, you don't have to. I just want to write down the theorem, and we'll go, let's go over this together. Uh, turns out they do this proof called a paragraph proof. Okay. Uh, on your homework in this section, they may ask you to do some paragraph proof and so forth. Maybe not this section, but don't do that. Okay, just do two column. Okay. So if they ask you to do a paragraph proof, just do two, <coughs> two column. That'll be fine. All right, so um, you see how you have the hypotenuse AB right here, AB and D congruent, the hypotenuse, and then the leg congruent. That's why it's called hypotenuse leg theorem, okay? Uh, so how would we prove this? That's the question. Um, do you think these blue dotted lines and so forth is going to be helpful for us? It might. It might? Okay, you think so? Okay, yeah, they will be. Okay, so you know what I'm going to do is now, I'm going to ask you to take a look at the plan for this proof. They give you the key step, okay? See if you can understand this. Okay, go ahead. I'll give you time. I want you to take t some time to read this as a group and see if you could help each other out. Yes? Oh, yeah, sorry. Move it down a little bit. Is that better? Okay, so as a group, I want you to then try to read this proof and see if you can understand what they're trying to say. Okay, and we'll go over it afterwards. Go ahead, everybody. Uh, take a look at what we have here, guys. Uh, first of all, let, before I go about this proof, proving this, let me ask you something. Um, do you guys remember if A is, oops, if A is congruent to B and B is congruent to C, what do you know about A and C? Because what is this? Because of transitive property. You guys remember that? Transitive property equalities. Now keep that in mind. First of all, let's look at what they're saying here. By the ruler postulate, do you understand that we could uh, draw an opposite ray of FD, extend this long enough so that there's a point so that FG will be same length as AC? Is that okay to understand? Yeah. So we're basically drawing an oscillated line. Is that okay? So that's fine. Okay, now, when, then of course there's a point and there's another point. Could we draw GE? Through two points, there is exactly one line. Is that okay? We drew that, okay? Now, once you have this, because we made uh, AC congruent to FG, okay, uh, we know that AC is congruent <coughs> to FG, and what do you know about this angle? Because EFD is 90, guess what? EFG is also 90. Because what? If, two, if this is 90, guess what? This is also 90 degrees. Would you agree? Right? Now, right. And because this is true, now what can we say? What can you tell me about this triangle A, B, C, and G, E, F? They are 
Jason? Why? Uh-huh. By sine angle psi, right? Uh, how do we know that BC is congruent to EF, guys, by the way? It's given. It's given, right? So don't we know, so are we okay so far here? Triangle ABC is congruent to GEF. We have satisfied all those three things, right? By sine angle psi, you see the psi, BC is congruent to EF, that's given. We know that AC is congruent to FG because that's how we constructed this, right? That's how we drew this auxiliary line. And we know that this angle is 90, of course this is also 90. Are you okay? Uh, so, but we're not done. We're not trying to prove that ABC is congruent to the blue one, are we? Right? What do you want us to try to show? ABC is congruent to DEF, okay? But we have this one congruent to this right now, so far. So are we okay so far here? Okay. So if this is true then, what do you know about AB and GE, guys? They are? Why? Why is AB congruent to GE right here? Because these are corresponding parts of congruent triangle. So are we okay with this one right here? Yes? That's what they're saying here, right? Then, Kenneth, what do we do next? Okay, hold on a second. All right, so Kenneth, what should I do next? So we know that AB congruent to uh, GE. What does this mean? Since DE is congruent to AB. Yeah, how do they get this? DE congruent to AB. Given, right? Isn't DE congruent to AB? Isn't that given? So how do they get this then? Why is DE congruent to GE? Anybody see how they got that? Oops. Who are they getting that from? <coughs> Remember, if A is congruent to B and B is congruent to C, what do you know about A and C? Leo? Transitive property of equality. I mean, not equality. Transitive property of congruence. Because look, we had, look what we had here. AB congruent to GE and what? DE congruent to AB, correct? So therefore, D is congruent to GE. Is that how we got, right? So as you can see, DE and AB are congruent. Are we okay so far? So we're good up to here. Any questions so far? Does that make sense? So what? Then, if I know that's true, what kind of triangle is this whole thing right here? Let me do this in green. What kind of, oh, in red. What kind of triangle is that red triangle? An isosceles triangle by the isosceles triangle theorem. What do you know about D and G? They are congruent, so I'm gonna put this. Is that okay? So that's what we have here, D and G congruent. Are we okay so far? Okay, so what? If that's true, we know that triangle ABC is congruent to GEF, okay? And if that's true, we know A is congruent to G. <coughs> Why? A and G are congruent because these are <coughs> corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Is that right? Because we have already proven that ABC is congruent to uh, GEF, right? If that's true, what can you tell me about, so we're good right here. What can you tell me about A and D? Why are these congruent then? Anybody see that? Why again? Because of? Transitive. Anybody see the transitive? We have G congruent to D, and what do we have here? A congruent to G. They're both congruent to G, therefore what do you know about A and D? They're congruent. So if that's congruent, guess what we have, guys? Because of? Yeah, why is this triangle congruent to this one? Angle, angle. Side, angle, angle, side. So by angle, angle, side, the two triangles ABC are congruent to DEF. Any questions? Does this make sense? Okay. Sort of? All right. Okay. Do you see, so even though it's a little long, as long as you follow it, it makes sense, doesn't it? Okay.